Rev up your engine! All right, here I am on a foggy day, answering a foggy question. Why do car batteries cost so much today? And how can I make mine last as long as possible? So I don't have to spend all that money. Most vehicles today still have dinosaur technology. Lead acid storage battery. They have battery acid, they have lead for storing and releasing electricity. And in one of these batteries, the average battery and the average American car has about 19 pounds of lead inside it. Now the price of lead has been going up as time passes for many reasons. Some of it is people aren't trading in the batteries as fast as they were because they're keeping their cars longer, not driving as much with the coronavirus pandemic. So there's a shortage of recycled lead. 90% of the lead for car batteries comes from recycling the old ones. So if you're not recycling the old ones, that's where their base comes from. Now I just called an AutoZone locally here in Tennessee and if you don't have an old battery when you're buying a new one they charge you an $18 core charge. So they're saying your old battery the lead is worth 18 bucks to them. Back in the day they used to charge two dollars. Now it's 18 because the lead's worth more. But of course at a vast commercial scale it's another story entirely. You want to buy a metric ton it's like two thousand dollars. Metric tons like 2200 pounds. At that level they're paying less than a dollar a pound for the stuff. So if you're buying a battery that has 19 pounds of lead it would have you know a little bit less than $19 worth of lead in it. So why oh why when you go to a modern store you'll see these batteries. The cheap ones will be a hundred dollars and the good ones might be a hundred and eighty dollars. So they certainly have a vast markup on that. Now you take this year 2020 the price of lead fluctuated a lot. Sometimes it was close to two dollars a pound instead of one one dollar a pound. But even at two dollars a pound, if it's got 19 pounds, that's 38 pounds of lead. Does that still mean the battery should be $189? Well, I personally don't think so. But you have to understand two things about buying batteries. One, it's generally a spot decision. You get in, your car uh -uh, doesn't start. So they know you're going to go to the closest auto parts store and buy one. They'll charge you a lot of money for them. That's one of their big profit items. Back when I was in Houston, the closest local auto parts chains, they told me they'd sell thousands of batteries each month. They made a ton of money off batteries. So of course you know they're seeing how high they can sell them for knowing that people that live there are going to buy a battery at a closed place. And one reason they do that is because it's close it's convenient. And two you try to buy them online well battery is corrosive. There's certain laws about shipping them. Who's going to move them from here to there. So you kind of stock that you're going to have to pay a high price if you're going to buy something locally. That's just the way the market is set up now. As it stands today, you can't get car batteries on Amazon. I put car battery in here for a Toyota. I'll just show parts of the Toyota. They're not handling car batteries. Perhaps one day they will. They don't. So you're kind of stuck. But if you plan ahead or say near Walmart, I just looked up $79 for one with a two-year free replacement for a big Chevy truck. That's the best price you're probably going to find. Now I called the local chain here for the same vehicle that I looked up at Walmart. They wanted a hundred bucks more. They wanted a hundred and seventy dollars for the same style of battery. If you are going to buy a battery, my advice is rates around. See what's out there. Walmart price was much better. They were both in stock. So plan ahead. Don't wait till the last second. If you live out in some faraway area, realize that most areas Walmart delivers car batteries. They will deliver it. So if you live out in the country somewhere, you think your battery's starting to go out, you test it, you're going to have it delivered. You don't even have to drive the one. So just keep that in mind so you can save money. Don't blow your what? Hey, I mean, if you can save a hundred bucks on a battery, why not? Don't back yourself in a corner where you got to buy it now of course any place where you got to buy it now you're going to pay more it's just the way the capitalist system works so then you might rightly say how can i tell if my battery's any good i need to replace it now or later well it's a very simple test now i got a very expensive medtronic tester here it does micro voltage a lot of stuff does that today it doesn't have to put a big load that the old tester could actually finish a dead battery that was almost dead off entirely because they had a heavy load test it does it with micro volts doesn't hurt anything you just put it on positive to positive 
positive, negative to negative. Then you see it's got 582 cranking amps. So you enter it. It's analyzing things. And you do in vehicle because it's in the vehicle. Battery post. And we're going to do regular battery because it's a regular battery. And we'll do cold cranking amps. And it says 582, 580. That's close enough. So we're going to enter it. Now it's analyzing it. It's got about, oh, 40% battery left. But you can also see the state of health is almost zero. You can see it starts right up. <laughs> So you might think, oh, there's nothing wrong, it starts right up. That's a fallacy in modern cars. When I was a young mechanic, when a battery started to age, you turn the key and it would go like, Rrr. Well, and then start up and you'd know either the starter was going out or more commonly the battery was getting weak but alas life is no longer that simple many times in modern cars i get customers they say my car just didn't start it started fine now it didn't start at all the way the modern cars are made they got better electronics so they can start with a lower amount of electricity but when they reach a certain parameter then they don't start at all and you're stuck you often won't get that warning of just one day the thing won't start in this case you can see the charge was maybe halfway but the state of health was almost zero that means it's time to change this battery as soon as possible now this van is five years and one month old got the original toyota battery no surprise it needs a new one even though it still starts because as i said the modern cars they can start on a lot less electricity but then when they don't start and you have no warning you're stuck. And then guess what? Then you're going to go to the nearest auto parts store and buy one of their $170 batteries instead of trying to find a deal like the $79 one that Walmart sells. So really planning ahead pays off here. You can have your battery checked every once in a while. And if you're a do-it-yourselfer, you can get scan tools that do all kinds of scanning like the Zenova and also check batteries and alternators. Everything's being miniaturized. You don't need my $800 dollar battery only tester it's a very good tester there's no arguing that these things actually work just as well now only they're even easier to use they just plug in the data port there's the connector we just plug it in got a battery tester it even knows what vehicle it is we do battery tests tells you to turn on the headlights let's check what it says it's tested just turn off the headlights and it says please fully charge the battery before performing battery tests it knows that there's a problem that the battery is low as you saw the state of health in the other one which is more complex it showed it was almost zero even though it had a certain amount of charge in it now i recharge this thing and then this just says that replace battery because it's low and anytime you say something like recharge battery this baby's used every day so the battery should be fully charged and since it's not fully charged there's either a problem with the alternator or the battery this thing also tests the alternator which i tested and it's putting out plenty of voltage it's putting out 14.4 voltage so there's nothing wrong with that so it to shows you that you need a new battery this is a relatively fancy scan tool you want to spend 250 300 bucks and get a great scan tool that does live data even does your remote starting on this toyota the Zenova is quite impressive you can go out and buy a standalone battery checker some of them online are as little as 29 dollars but here's my advice don't ever buy any of those they're useless i've had tons of chinese companies send me those things and they work like garbage they gave you bad data check something and see what it said then i'd hook up my fancy medtronics one which i know is correct and it would give completely different data than the cheap chinese ones would it always had the same data as this anova which like i say does fantastic scanning and all kinds of other stuff if you want to buy your own battery and alternator tester get a quality one don't buy some cheap thing this does so many other things and it's got a quality battery analyzer let's say you and your friends mess around with your cars you could buy one of these get three or four friends you each throw in 50 bucks you got a tool that you maybe you're not going to use it all the time but it's good for all makes and models there's free upgrades forever you can test batteries starters alternators and you know you're doing it right and just think about it sure the discount auto parts stores they test the stuff out free sometimes their equipment isn't as good as mine but then of course they want to sell you a really expensive battery you're better off having a tool yourself then you know if you need it or not and you can buy it ahead of time when it shows the charge is getting low and you're not stuck somewhere where okay now you're gonna pay a hundred bucks too much for your battery and when you do buy a battery realize that batteries are like eggs they go bad over time they all have a born on date it's usually hidden in some weird thing but you can see it like if it says b o o that would mean february a is january 
be as February 2001. You don't want to buy a battery that's more than a couple months old. In the United States, they're all dated and by law, they got to show you what the date is. Don't buy when it's more than a couple months old because when you fill a battery up, it starts to deteriorate over time. Car batteries are lead acid storage batteries that are meant to be used a little starting the car, use electricity up and recharge, used and recharge. They're not meant for just sitting, not being used. They go bad just sitting. I'll give you a perfect example of this problem. Years ago, Delco started getting their batteries from Korea. So they made them in Korea, they filled them with the acid, and then they ship them over here in boats and stuff. I thought they were great, because back in the day, they only cost me like 39 bucks a piece. So I bought tons of them for my customers. Within a year, Many of them had come back, almost all of them one year, and I realized these aren't very good batteries. Well, they were filling with acid in Korea, then shipping them over here. By the time they got here and were sold, they were too old, and they'd already lost a lot of their lifespan. Now batteries didn't used to be made that way. When I was a young mechanic in the 60s, we would get batteries at the corner Texaco station my father ran. They were vacuum sealed. There was nothing in them. We'd break the seals when somebody bought them, put the acid in, charge them up on the machine, then install them. A battery that's vacuum vacuum sealed has a lifespan almost indefinite. But today, they make the batteries, they fill them with acid, the stores have them already filled with acid. For various reasons, it's more efficient for them, they don't have to deal with pouring the battery acid in and charging them up, and the customer doesn't have to wait, because in our case, we ran a garage. They brought it in, they said, leave it, we'll get it ready. We'd have to break the seals, fill it up, and then charge it up for about an hour on the machine, and then install them. So today, they're all sold conveniently, everything's already in them, except for motorcycle batteries. <laughs> I just got a great motorcycle battery from my Triumph motorcycle. Guess what? It came completely sealed. I broke the seal. Tubes of acid that you just push through the seal and fill them up. Because the lifespan of that is indefinite on the shelf. It doesn't have any acid in it. But any battery you're going to buy today for cars, generally, you're going to have the acid already in it. And if it's been sitting there for months, it's degrading. If it's been sitting there six or eight months, it might have lost 50, 60 percent of its lifespan. Instead of lasting five years like this battery, Maybe it will only last two years. So you'll want to make sure when you need a battery, you get a fresh battery. So always look at the production date of it. If it's more than a couple months old, don't buy it. So when you do buy a battery, you're gonna buy it from a place that sells a lot of batteries. I'm sure Walmart sells an awful lot of batteries, so they keep getting new ones in. You go to some little garage somewhere, maybe they got a battery that's been sitting on a shelf for a year or two. It's really gonna lose its lifespan. So you wanna buy it where they sell a lot of batteries. Same thing with tires. Just sitting, tires dry rot. So you go to some place where a guy doesn't sell that many tires, if he's got some old ones lying around that fit your car, they might not last that long because they could be dry rotted. Now batteries don't dry rot, they do the exact opposite. They wet rot. The acid and the lead reacts over time and it'll go bad just sitting there if you don't use the thing. So always get a fresh battery when you buy one. Now you know why batteries cost more. Some of it is the price of lead, but on the other hand, if you can get a battery for 79 bucks at Walmart that costs $170 at a discount auto parts store? Get you thinking that some people are marking their stuff up a little bit too high. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.